Good afternoon. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking time out of your afternoon. Of course. Your I've been super excited. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. How was, how was your uh, Thanksgiving? How'd that go? Um, it was fine. I went to my stepdad's family's house because my family is fucking insane. <laughs> so they're more relaxed. So I went over there. What did you do? Well, cool. Yeah. I, uh, well, I was actually quarantined because I had COVID. <laughs> That's right. You told me. Yeah, That's I right. had, yeah, I had COVID right before Thanksgiving. So I couldn't spend it with my girlfriend's family like I planned. So that <sighs> sucked. Uh, yeah, that sucked. But I mean, they brought me food. So that was awesome. Like, oh my gosh, they like leave it on the doorstep for you and like ring yeah, the doorbell. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, run yeah. away. They're all, bye. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that was nice. I got to eat pretty, I mean, they're, it's a whole family of like amazing cooks. So I got to eat pretty well. So I was happy with that. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was cool. Um, so, I mean, I just want to get right to the chase. Um, Let's so I, on. yeah, so I, I came up with the title for this podcast as a play on words for only fans, mm -hmm. which is something that you have turned into a pretty solid source of revenue. Yes. From what I've seen, what I've heard. Yes. Um, so, I mean, I guess my first question is like, honestly, like when you're, when, when you're like, okay, I want to set up an account. I want to start doing this. What's the process? I remember like, we had a conversation about a month and a half ago. And yeah. You, and you said you had to set up a fucking W2. So I was talking to my mom about it earlier. Cause it's not a W2. It's a, I'm really bad at being an adult, like an I-99 or whatever it's called. I don't, even, I don't know what that is either. It's okay. It's it's not a W-2, but it's basically just a form saying that you're making money from them so you can put it on your taxes because you will be, get taxed on all of it. So I'm going to owe money next year when I fill out all my taxes. Interesting. Yeah. So I put at least 10% aside of all of my earnings into a savings account just in case because okay. I don't want them to be like, you owe us. Nine hundred dollars. Yeah, a fuck. I'm like, money. fuck me. Um, but right when COVID started, I, you know, it became like this super huge thing. Yeah. And I was like, I had been a sex worker since I was 18, and I was kind of fine with doing my own thing, selling my own content on my own. And I'm watching these girls make like five thousand dollars a month. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> And I wasn't working. I just moved to Virginia. So I wasn't working. I'm a full-time student and I was making okay money, but I was like, nah, I'm not going to fuck with it. It's fine. It's fine. And then finally, right before my fiance and I moved in together, I was like, I'm going to do it. Right. I'm going to just do it. And he's like, okay, more power to you. <laughs> and so basically you go in, you put all your information, um, you have to send pictures of your ID and then you have to take pictures with your ID oh, and shit. send that like with your face so they can prove that it's you and that you're a real adult and you're not a kid or you're not a scammer. And then you just put in your routing and your account number and then people just start subscribing and <laughs> Damn. It's, it's too easy. It's kind of scary how easy it is. Interesting. Well, see, it's funny because that was going to be one of my questions is like, what kind of, um, like what kind of barriers do they have to make sure that you are a real person, that you are a legal adult and all these things. That's interesting. And it's good. I mean, that's obviously very good that they have all of these, you know, steps you have to take to actually verify yourself. I would say they require your social security number as well. So it's no shit. Yeah. So they want to know that you're legit real person. So I do appreciate that because yeah. God knows what, someone could do no yeah no the awful things that could happen oh yeah um i mean i remember i want to say it was like four years ago five years ago when revenge porn became a huge thing in the news where these people were just putting up these images and these videos of their ex-boyfriends girlfriends husbands so on and so forth wives and it became this huge thing it's like oh okay so you did this to me now the entire world can see, you know, you at your most intimate. Yeah. So that's good that they can, that they're effectively preventing that. Well, and the other thing that sucks though is, so every time I upload, which 
I think I could be better about this, but I'm not. And I think that's just the sheer <laughs> laziness of me. Okay. So everything gets a watermark when you post it and it's your at name. And then it usually says like at or like slash only fans, you know, whatever, but it's always like in the very like bottom corner. Okay. And so anyone could get that and just crop that bottom part off and then have your pictures. And I always think about that and I'm like, well, if you want to use my body to make money by yourself, like that's just shitty, but it's kind yeah. of like, well, that's kind of, I mean, I imagine that's one of, I mean, that's probably, probably one of the biggest risks you run just getting into this business. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's just a thing. Like I remember I saw, I think like last year, year and a half ago, uh, I, f- I forget the porn actress's name, but uh, some famous porn star got into this big rant on the internet that went viral because she wanted all of her videos taken down because she was embarrassed that she did it and all these things like, yeah, well, that sucks that you regret it. Like that really sucks. And I'm sorry, but also you I mean, did you, it. Yeah, you did it. Like you made your bed time to lay in it. No, I agree. And that's another thing that a lot of the, I really don't get that much hate which is really nice. And I feel like kind of surprising, but I think a lot of it is like, what are you going to do about it in the future? Like blah, blah, blah. And so that's why I just, I don't show my face. Apparently that's like a huge turnoff to a lot of people that I didn't know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Men will be like, Oh, you don't show your face. Never mind." And I'm like, okay, that's yeah. fine with me. I'm not going to give in just for money to show you my face. But um, I just lost my train of thought. Um, you don't show your face. So uh, oh, like, so I'm hoping in the future when I become a therapist and I have kids and stuff, I do have a lot of very distinctive tattoos on my body, but I try to keep it just a little more private than your yeah. average porn star would. Right. So, okay. So yeah, I mean, I have a lot of questions, but I guess uh, <laughs> one question that I have is just so like, so you, you make a decent amount to say, you know, conservatively, you make a decent amount of money through this website. Mm-hmm. Is is there a future that you see for yourself being a sex worker? Or is this strictly like, you know what, I'm going to stay to OnlyFans. I'm going to keep making this money, garner what I can make. And when it's time to cut it off, it's time to cut it off. So that's actually something that I think about a lot. And I mean, a lot, a lot, at least once a day. And it's, <laughs> it's being in college paying for college. I mean, I did homework for three hours before we got on the phone today. I mean, (laughs) it's exhausting. My semester's almost over, which is really great, but COVID really put a huge dent in that, which is going to take me longer to just get my associates. Like I'm very far behind in school. Yeah. Um, so every day I'm like, I could do it. I could just be a porn star. I could just go do it. (laughs) (laughs) But then I'm like, no, 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 no. That's like, no, I'm not going to do that. But then I see all these girls on TikTok and like a lot of the girls that I follow, you know, being bisexual, I'm always like, damn, bitch, you're hot as fuck. (laughs) And they're all porn stars and they all have OnlyFans and they're all on Pornhub and they make this insane living. And I'm just so envious of that kind of financial stability. Yeah. But I fear for the day that I have kids and the kids go, I saw your mom on Pornhub or yeah. you know, just sit like that. I don't want my kids to have to know that what you mom. did in your twenties. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, so yeah. right now I really just try and tell myself like, this is good for now. It pays all of my bills. My fiance, fiance and I are like super happy with where we are. We always have extra money to mess around with. Our bills get paid but it's always in the back of my head that I could just do this forever and just yeah. say fuck college and just be well, done. Well, no, yeah, that's tough. I mean, when you you're when you're getting so much money, when right now money is not going around. Yeah, exactly. And so it's I totally get it. I mean, and like I mean, I said I said it on a podcast with one of my buddies that I shot like a month ago, and I was like, look. I'm never going to have an OnlyFans. I'm never going to throw my dick on the internet, but I get why people do it. Like I totally get it. Um, but on the note of like, you know, uh, I don't know if that's what I want or like, if I don't know what that lifestyle leads to, if you haven't watched them, uh, there's actually a couple of really good documentaries on Netflix. Uh, mm-hmm. There is one produced by Rashida Jones. I don't know if you know who that is. 
I don't think so. It um, sounds familiar. She plays Anne on Parks and Rec. And then she was Jim's girlfriend, Karen, on The Office. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So she produced a documentary called Hot Girls Wanted. And it, oh, I watched that when I yeah. was in like middle school, high school. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. Yeah. So Hot Girls Wanted, that's uh, a really good one. And then there's a series, but I've only seen the third one. That's the only one they've had on Netflix. It's called After Porn Ends. And they follow the, they've definitely follow, I think, like two different porn stars, both female. And it's literally their life after they're done with um, a big brand porn uh, company. And I want to say I've seen those, but it's been years. Yeah. Well, they're worth, they're worth a rewatch. And, no, definitely. Especially and, now. Yeah. And, and it's sad because like it, when you go into the statistics of the porn of the actual like pornography industry, working for all these big brands, these women that get out of it, their lifespan in it, I think the average is like 18 months, like the, mm-hmm. their, their average lifespan is like 18 months. The big ones make it however long they want to make it because they catch that wave and they just ride. But I mean, the, the one of the, I forget the woman's name that they profiled and they followed, but she got addicted to very heavy drugs. Um, and it followed her after her official career. She started producing her own uh, movies, her own uh, scenes afterwards. And I mean, I remember specifically there's a part where she's scrambling to get an actor to be with her in a scene because the first guy ditched. And mm-hmm. since her stress level is going up so high, she just immediately texts her drug dealer to bring her black tar. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So she does heroin, gets all doped up, and then turns around and does a scene. And she's a very beautiful home in a very beautiful part of California. But it's like, okay, that's great that you got to that you got to where you're at. But what what life are you living inside of that beautiful home? Well, and one of the biggest things for me is I think it took me a long time to realize this, like as an adult and as a woman now. As a teenager, I never thought about it or gave a fuck about it, but I can only imagine the mental health issues a woman will have when she's done being a sex worker and has sex with so many men. And I'm not saying that every woman will feel this way, but the piece of yourself that you give that person and the piece of them that you receive, you're stuck with that forever. Yeah. I can only imagine once you're done, how like maybe lonely it feels or just sad you feel. I mean, I think about as a, like, as a psych major, I think about this stuff all the time is what are the bad things that can happen to someone? Cause it's yeah. not like a super glamorous, amazing industry. It's kind of scummy. No, it's very, it's very ugly. Yeah. Yeah. It's very ugly. And I, and I saw, I remember I've seen, I mean, I still see them. I see campaigns online about, you know, petition to take down Pornhub, specifically Pornhub, because they've had so many instances of having underage girls videos on their website. So many instances of human trafficking or uh, videos that were products of human trafficking. Yeah. And they have all these problems, but I mean, whoever the Pornhub executives are, you certainly don't hear from them. Because they're making no. they're making money hand over, hand over fist. I would say you can only imagine how rich they are. No, it's ridiculous. Because I mean, I've heard of it too. Like I've I've heard of it too. The amount of people that are like original content creators or their pornography actors or act or actresses that worked with the big companies that are making their own things and now they're making a stupid amount of money by themselves. They've effectively cut out the middleman. And so they're making all this money. So how much money are the executives from Pornhub making? So well, yeah. And I can I know that what they're doing is super wrong, but I could see their perspective of cutting out the middleman because I started OnlyFans and I got a job in the middle of it. And I actually quit my job two months ago just because I was very unhappy there. And I was like, I'll get a new job after I have my vacation, which was last month. And I'm just realizing how much I don't need a job. And how I enjoy being a student and being like stay at home fiance, he makes dinner every night, you know, shit like that. But the, the pressure I feel from society to get a job, even though I basically have a job is really like hard to deal with. Cause I don't know, like, do I need to go and be like what everyone wants me to be? Or can I just stay home and like, 
do what you're doing. No, do what I'm doing. Do what you're doing. Yeah, no, I told. I mean, and again, like when you're having that much money just thrown at you digitally, but thrown at you. And I mean, and so when, when COVID kicked off and all these places are shutting down, the NBA cancels their season, uh, bars are closing down, movie theaters are closing down, you know? And then I see around town, um, all these establishments are being shut down. And I was kind of thinking about it in my head one night and I was like, okay, people, hopefully our government will get it together and we'll get stimulus checks. That didn't fucking happen. Like it happened once, but that was more of an insult now than anything. I was going to say, did you get yours? Uh, I got mine a month and a half ago, two months ago. Holy fuck. What? Yeah. I got, I got mine way late, dude. Wow. Oh yeah. No, I got fucked. I got fucked. Oh yeah. But so I was thinking, I was like, what are the strippers going to do? That's interesting. No, seriously. Like, (laughs) no, no, you're right. (laughs) Like, what are they? (laughs) Cause I, cause like I've had, I've had a few friends that had, that turned, uh, to stripping for a dog for a job. A lot of them mm-hmm. being college students, and they're like, "Bro, I'm so close to dropping out of college," and I'm like, "I get it." So I'm like, "Okay, if that's such a major source of money, what are you gonna do?" And then I just see all over my Instagram, follow my OnlyFans. I'm like, "What the fuck is an OnlyFans?" And like, "Oh, that makes sense. That makes complete sense. That makes perfect sense." Yeah, and I mean, and again, like I know a lot of people. I mean, obviously, as you've mentioned, a lot of people look down on it. A lot of think that it's bad or whatever their opinion is that's negative towards it. And I mean, you could think what you want to think, but I look at it and I'm like, these individuals, men and women, these individuals are effectively making a lot of money off of people being horny. That is hilarious to me. (laughs) That's hilarious to me. Like you're not, you're not getting any physical contact with them. Um, can they message you on OnlyFans? So you can turn that on and off, I believe. I've never turned mine off. They can message you, and <laughs> the fucked up thing is you can actually make it so they have to pay to open your replies. <laughs> so I don't do that because I feel like that's just squeezing too hard. <laughs> so I'll send like private stuff that I haven't posted, and I'll charge like 10 bucks to open it and it's just like a picture or a video i'm sorry 10 dollars for a picture yeah and well, people so, do it oh fuck yeah when i was selling content separately one picture was always 10 dollars. and then if i knew that they were kind of like you know schmucky cucks i was like 15 dollars, 25 dollars. and getting into the industry like this is you get a lot of men who like to be degraded and have like a dominatrix type type relationship. And so, (laughs) Hey, I'm not judging. I'm just surprised. I'm not judging. I'm just like, what the fuck? (laughs) It's mind blowing. Okay. Are you ready for this? In my living room, I'm in my spare bedroom, my living room. I have like a place where I put all my keys. There is a set of keys in there that I've had for three months. And then they go to a guy's cock cage. So he can't get a boner because it like squeezes it down. I've had those keys for three months and he sends me at least $250 a month just to keep the keys and not send them back. I'm not even shitting you. <laughs> oh Once you God. get into a, like a, a community like this, it's really interesting. The people that will come out and the things that people will ask from you or just to do people have the craziest kinks. Well, so uh, that isn't Okay. I mean, that is just a, okay. The, the fact that people, the wide, it's like spectrum, I guess, of things that people are into doesn't surprise me at all. But like, I, what's, what's shocking me more than anything is the money. Like, yeah, that I, is what, that is what blows my mind the most. I grew up always thinking like, you don't waste money. You don't throw money away. You don't give people money for no reason. Like you're very stingy about it. But then now here I am where I'm like, you're a piece of shit. I'm not talking to you for the rest of the day. Send me a hundred bucks. And, and that just, works. Yes. Only Jeez. with certain ones, only with certain people though. Cause if Whoa, they're not right. into that, Whoa, they're going right. to be like, go fuck yourself. Like, no, right. No, right. 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 Yeah. So that's it. Wow. Good Christ. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. I have even more questions, but I, I keep like a mental list of all this shit. Okay. 
Um, so, so, oh, so earlier you mentioned that you were talking to your mother about this. Yeah. So your mom knows that you do, that you have an OnlyFans. What yeah. was that like telling, like telling your family? So How was that? my mom is the, my, my mom and my stepdad are the only people that know. Um, I keep it very, very private from like Facebook. Cause I have all my Mormon family there Oof. and I, I know I would be shunned for doing the kind of work that I do. But I remember when I first moved out here to Virginia, so that was almost a little over two years ago. I moved here and moved away and went back and forth a couple times. One of the times I was here, I was going on a Tinder date with a guy that I'm actually still friends with. And on my way home, I crashed my mom's brand new minivan that she had just bought. Eesh. And to get it towed was 150 bucks. And in my mom's mind, I hadn't had a job in almost a year. And so I paid for the towing and she's like, how, how did you pay for that? And I was like, all right, mama, let's have a chat. And so I, I just told her, credit card. I would have been like, yay. What's more debt. Fuck no, it. she, I didn't even have a credit card at the time. I got my first credit card a year ago, a year and a half ago. And I'm 23, <laughs> excuse me. Um, but I told her, I was like, I sell my nudes on the internet. And she was like, I figured. <laughs> oh and I was like, God. you figured? And she's like, I looked at your Twitter one time. And I was like, oh, oh no. shit. How long have you known? And she goes, a while. Dude. And I was like, how does that make you feel? And she's <laughs> like, well, are you being safe about it? And I was like, I never show my face. I'm very, like, I only take payment first, stuff like that. And she's like, well, as long as you're being safe and, you know, this doesn't affect your future, more power to you. Interesting. And I was like, dude, like the support that my mom gives me is awesome. And it's just, it's really nice. And my mom is fucking awesome. Like I was talking to my fiance a couple nights ago and I was like, I want to make a Tinder and just put my information out there so I gain more followers and then they'll just find my OnlyFans or buy content for me. And he's like, sure. So I go to make make one on my phone. I got banned from Tinder like eight months ago for trying to do this. And I put some two saucy pictures on Tinder. So they banned me. So I'm like, baby, give me your phone number. He got banned on Tinder <laughs> before we started dating for being an asshole. And so I <laughs> called my mom and I was like, mom. I'm going to, I'm going to use your phone number for Tinder. And she's like, what, what are you doing? And I was like, well, I'm going to promote myself. And she goes, oh, okay. I was concerned, but okay. And I was like, okay, let me know when it sends you the code. And she's like, <laughs> okay, cool. So like now I have a Tinder and I have all these dating apps, but it's just my information. So guys will just come find me and it's ridiculously easy money. Yeah. Fuck. Okay. So then, yeah. So, so your fiance is obviously privy to all of this that's going on. He knows the content mm -hmm. you sell. So was there any convincing? Because I mean, I would imagine like for most people, like if, if so, okay. So actually, here's before I ask that or really go into that. So when you two started dating, did you, or did you not have an OnlyFans? Uh, I did not, but I was selling content. Okay. So you had already been in this kind of exchange yeah, for, this, for this commerce exchange yes yeah so so he knew that going in yeah and so i kind of figured since i do it very based on my twitter and then i recently branched out to instagram um when he followed me on twitter i was just kind of like he'll find it or he won't but if he finds it we'll talk about it if he doesn't agree if he doesn't find it i'll bring it up when i feel like the time is necessary and he knows that like, I love him. I know he loves me. We're very secure in our relationship. He's very secure in his masculinity. And he knows that like, I'm hot and not to like stroke my own dick, but like if it pays our bills and we get to go on dates and like, I paid for our whole vacation last month. So it's just, it's fun. And he gets yeah. to like, we get to do sexy things and he gets to feel like hot cause guys want me. And he's like, ha ha ha. <laughs> so he's, he's really good about it. He's, he's really supportive and I really appreciate him. Yeah, no, I, I bet because I mean, that would just be a tough sell for a lot of people. Yeah. You know, and for a, I've definitely, for a lot of people. 
I've definitely gotten that hate is like, oh, your fiance must be a pussy. Your fiance must be such a cuck. And I'm like, no, dude, he's just secure in himself. He's secure in the fact that he knows that I love him and it pays our bills. We share bills together. Like we share debt together. We're about to get married. Like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. I know he sure as hell ain't going nowhere. So yeah. Well, again, I mean, that's again, like not only is that a tough sell, but I guess, you know, for you guys and your relationship, I, I would imagine, obviously I, I don't know everyone on the face of the planet, but and I'm very happy to hear that you guys are so secure and you're so very, <laughs> um, like accepting, but for, I just know a lot of people wouldn't be. So that's, I mean, that's great to hear. I mean, it's great to hear that you guys have that solid relationship. Like that's awesome. Um, so what kind of on that negative side of things though? So what, what's the most frequent, like negative feedback that you get about being in this business? I think it's just the fact that like I'm naked on the internet. Okay. People think that I'm not smart enough or knowledgeable enough to go out and get a job because I'm just naked on the internet or I've right. given up. Okay. People, people don't realize that I, I haven't given, given up. I'm in college. Like, yeah. but they don't see that. They just see Michelle's being a hoe, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's really, it's really upsetting. I recently unfriended a guy on Facebook, like just the other day, him and I were, you know, internet friends and I had to unfriend him because he was making a post at least every other day, every couple of days, just about girls being naked on the internet and how degrading that was and how he's so thankful his girlfriend like works two jobs and pays for her kids and doesn't accept child support and doesn't show her body off. And I was like, you don't have to support it. You don't have to like it. I don't give a fuck if you think it's the most disgusting thing in the world, but does it affect you? No. Does your girlfriend do it? No. So why are you so worried about it? Yeah. And no. it just got to the point where it was so negative that I was just like, no, I'm done. No, I mean, that's understandable. Like, I mean, that's, that's my view on pretty much anything. Like if I don't give a fuck what anyone does, like, Facts. I mean, like, do I care? Like with exception, like, do I care about what my girlfriend does? Of course I want her to be safe. Do I care yes. about what my best friends do in my, like my circle, my very tight knit circle of people? Yes. My family, of course. And if they, if they start to do something that worries me, I'm going to speak up because I care about them. Yeah. Right. So obviously I give a fuck about what they do, but for like the general populace, dude, as long as you're not hurting yourself or hurting another person, whatever, like do what the fuck you want to do. I don't understand why we're like, not you and I, or maybe the people we're around, but us as a society currently, we're so obsessed with other people. So I think, so yeah, so I agree. (laughs) I agree. I don't fucking get it. I think the reason for it, honestly, is social media. I think, and I I talk, I think I've talked about this on every episode that I've shot and it's just something I firmly believe in. Like social media on paper is such a very beautiful thing. Like, so me, um, so I I went to um, a boarding school, a military academy for high school. And, uh, the first two years of college. And so it being a very widely known school, I just, there was a lot of people that went to that school from all over the world. Mm-hmm. Like if they, it was like, thanks to that school. I mean, I know people all over the country. I know people from, I think, I think every continent except Antarctica, like I know, <laughs> I know people from everywhere. And, uh, So social media allows me to keep in contact with these people, whether it's once a week or once a year, um, indirectly, you see, I see what they're posting or directly through a message. So it's a very beautiful thing, but especially that we've seen this year with the pandemic and, um, everything, all the hate that's coming up for law enforcement and, uh, the, the, uh, the, the just increased animosity towards our government, like mm-hmm. social media has become a very, not that it hasn't been in the past. It definitely has, but it's just become a very toxic place. And it's become a very, uh, it's just a bit, yes, yeah, it's become a very toxic place. Like, so when I was setting everything up for this podcast, I set up like the YouTube channel, the Facebook page, Instagram page, I set up a Twitter 
but mm-hmm. I doubt that I'm going to fucking use it because I hear about <laughs> all the horrible things that happen on Twitter and the horrible discourse that is on Twitter. So I'm yeah. like, why am I, why am I going to subject myself? <laughs> cause like, cause like I know that going into this, my big thing was like, yeah, I want, I obviously want an excuse to shoot shit with my close friends, but also I want people on here that are from very different walks of life that have very different viewpoints you know, I don't want only people that think like me. I don't want yeah. only, and I want people that, that are just, you know, very, I want a very diverse set of people for every episode. And as a byproduct of that, I'm probably going to have some people on here that a lot of people don't agree with. And that's my goal. Yeah. Like, like that's my goal. <laughs> and so, so why am I going to subject myself? And that's not to say that I'm not going to get shit on like YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook. But Twitter being the with the highest toxicity, why am I going to subject myself to that? So, I mean, props to you for using Twitter because, good Christ, I can't even imagine what it's like on there. So I I actually wrote my my sociology paper, my final paper on social media throughout my life because I feel like it's affected me mentally more than I've ever realized until I became an adult. And I I think it's like a big problem, like my social anxiety, my fear of going outside, things like that. I hands off to social media. Like that's one of the biggest reasons that I'm, you know, am the way that I am. Um, but I made my Twitter. God, I was probably in like elementary school, early middle school, like when Twitter was still like, like early on Twitter where everyone would just tweet like, going to the grocery store, you know, like tweets right. like that. Very you just innocent tweet about times. what you did and watching it evolve throughout these years has been kind of sad. It's kind of like how bad Facebook has gotten. Like everyone gets banned on Facebook all the time. I get banned on a pretty regular basis. No one gets banned on Twitter because there's no regulations and rules on Twitter. You can just go fucking balls to the walls, like full pussy out. And they're just going to be like, good for you. You go and see, you know, I see because, like, I support just complete freedom of whatever you want to do on the internet. Yeah, I support that 100%. Um, I mean, I would even go as far, and I never really thought about this until I heard Joe Rogan talk about it on his podcast. Um, he brought up a really good point, and the point he brings up is social media has become this just huge, huge source of communication. And Mm -hmm. it should almost be, uh, it should be treated as a utility that everyone has access to it. So therefore it cannot be regulated. And, um, and the biggest argument for that is coming from people on Facebook getting banned, like just outright getting banned or getting like the 30 day ban, the 60 day ban, whatever it is, or people on Instagram getting banned. Or what I would argue is worse is people getting shadow banned on Instagram where it's like, yeah, we're not going to ban your account, but we're going to make sure our algorithm never shows you. Yeah. And that, so, mess- that also messes with people's like, like cash flow. Yeah. And that's super detrimental as well. Yeah, no, and I, I completely agree. So, yeah, I mean, is there horrible things on social media for sure? And there, and people just need to shut the fuck up. I mean, like, yes. and I think, and I, and I think, I think the other big thing is like, I think, especially after this year, if it doesn't happen after this year, I don't think it ever will. But like, people know how like, people know who the idiots are on Instagram on mm. Facebook, on just social media, right? People know who the idiots are. So the general populace will just be like, all right, I'm just not going to listen to you, whatever. And then the people that do listen to these, to extremists, to fools, just these people that follow the Pied Piper, they make themselves known. Mm-hmm. So they, they cast themselves out, you know, and they become a part of that group. It's like, all right, well, you're clearly a fucking idiot. So whatever. <laughs> um, no, I mean, that's just how I fucking feel. I mean... Um, so, so again, so you're studying psychology specifically in college. Okay. Yes. So that's an interesting dichotomy. You're a psychology major, but you're practicing in something that has a very high rate of mental illness problems. Mm -hmm. uh, What do you think about that? Like, how how do you digest that? That's what I was kind of talking about earlier is how it can affect a person once they're done in the sex industry and everything like that. And 
I, I feel like once you're done and that's just having, that's like being on Pornhub, like being an actual porn star. I really, I, and if it does happen, like selling nudes and stuff, I haven't experienced the, the bad part of it yet. No part of it makes me feel bad about myself or worries me or affects the mental illnesses I have or don't have yet, you know, but I can only imagine the issues that the people have that actually are porn stars afterwards, because the spiritual connection you have with someone when you have sex with them doesn't just go away. Even if you choose to ignore it, you could be 65 sitting on your couch chilling and someone's going to come on TV and trigger the fuck out of your subconscious. And you're going to be like, damn, I really did all that. Right. And I don't want to degrade the people that just go out and have sex with like tons of people. But I know being a teenager and being stupid and doing the messed up things that I did as an adult, it really affected me that I gave my body away so many times just because I thought that was what girls were supposed to do. And so maybe it's different because they get paid for it. And it's just like a psychological, like get that head, get that bread, then leave. Yeah. But I really don't know. And I can only imagine the emptiness. Honestly. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, yeah, that's a very good point. And I, I'd have to agree with you. I mean, cause again, I haven't dipped my toe in any way, shape or form into that industry, but like in because I I, th- I think it's a very interesting topic to read about. So I have read about it, researched it, and those the documentaries I've told you I've seen. So I have no, I have by no means a grasp on the concept of sex work or being in the mm-hmm. industry. But just looking at it with an outward perspective, I just look at it and I'm like, okay, yeah, I I understand one hundred percent. Speaking specifically about very uh, famous and affluent porn actresses and actors, mm-hmm. I understand why you're doing it. I get it. Like it's, it's very obvious. You get a lot of money. You have yeah. sex all the time. You feel great in the moment, all these things, but like, yeah, the after effects have got to be ridiculous. And and I, I, you brought up a really good point when you said that whether you want to acknowledge it or not, because I mean, I just, I can't even count how many people that I know personally, uh, like when it comes to alcohol, mm-hmm. it's like, okay, you know, you can tell yourself all you want that alcohol makes you feel good. Alcohol makes your life better. And I, I mean, I'm not saying alcohol is bad at all. I drink. I love whiskey. I, I love whiskey more than I probably should. I, I, I absolutely love, I love drinking whiskey, but I've also forced myself again after like between, like between the ages of like God, uh, 18 and just, 2021 i just didn't have a handle on how i was drinking and not that i was drinking all the time every day but it was a little bit when i was 18 a little bit when i was 19 a lot when i was 20 a lot when i got about half it through 21 and then finally i was like okay this needs to stop yeah like i need to cut back and i thankfully i found avenues that let me do that and i move forward but a lot of people don't find that or they find that too late and they just keep telling themselves that it makes them feel better. And I'm just like, okay, well, you can tell yourself that all you want, but the fact of the matter is that alcohol is depressant. Yeah. Like it is a depressant. And no matter what you think it's going to do, it is fucking with the chemicals in your brain. And you can't control that. Like you can do mental exercises. You can do physical things that improve your, like improve the way you like you in, like you improve the way like you take in and put out things mm-hmm. but at the end of the day if you're sucking down all this poison i mean that's just what it's going to be so yeah i think it's interesting to look at uh porn actors and actresses after they're done and what happens to them and kind of on like a sidestep to that you know with covid going on a lot of people i mean such as yourself have been forced to do college online yeah and the problem that I saw was, or I am seeing rather, is children in elementary school, middle school, and high school being forced to do their schooling online. Mm-hmm. And we're already seeing the effects of social media, whether it's on your computer or on your phone. You have these bright lights just going at you, you yeah. know? And I mean, you brought up that you started Twitter in what, middle school? God, you know, 
probably when it first came out. I don't even know how old I was. Yeah. So if you're young and you're having all these things affecting your reward system that early, I think it's going to be, I mean, it's going to be sad more than likely, but it's going to be interesting to see where these kids are that went through the COVID schooling, like the way schooling was affected by COVID. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like we are, there's already a problem of just kids that like have energy and want to go out and do things. And adults saying, Oh, and I'm by no means a doctor. I'm not a psychiatrist. (laughs) I'm not a pharmacist, but like, I just, again, just looking in, just being like, okay, if a kid has a lot of energy, don't dope him down. Don't give him all these ADHD medicines. Like let that, maybe that kid, maybe that kid that has so much energy, maybe he has a chance or she has a chance to break out of the bullshit and they create something really great or they do something really great to just break out of this traditional bullshit that everyone else is stuck in. Yes. You know, like, and so, yeah, you know, so maybe, maybe they have the opportunity. Maybe they have the brain waves to break out of it and do something creative with their lives. But I feel like now you're going to have all these problems where you like what kid between the ages of five and 16, 17, 18, do you legitimately expect to sit in front of a computer and learn for eight to 10 hours a day? I can't even do it. And I have pretty, I feel like I have pretty good, like, uh, what's the word? Like I can make myself do something. I can like, if I have like self-discipline. There, yeah. So when it comes to school, yeah. but even then like j- just a couple hours and I'm like brain dead, I literally feel exhausted just from reading and tapping my mouse and scrolling. You know, I'm not really doing that much, but the mental, uh, like energy I'm putting into it and like trying to absorb all this fucking shit <laughs> is exhausting. Yeah. And so when I think back to, cause how old are you? 23. Okay. Yeah. So we're the same age. So I think about like when we were kids and when we grew up, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have phones. Not in the know, mass scale like that. that it's in. Certainly. Yeah. Like, but when we were super young, we got to watch it evolve as we got older and things you know, become what they are today. But in school, I remember when we first got those fucking giant like projector boards that you could draw on and pull up the internet on it. Oh yeah. And we were like, dude, yeah, this is the future. And we thought it was so cool and just so new and exciting, but we were still reading books and still going to the library and going outside and we didn't have phones and we were playing fucking what is the ball that goes around the Oh, tetherball. Yeah, like doing kid shit. Yeah. And now these kids are stuck inside looking at the screen. The blue light is affecting their eyes. It's affecting their brain. I mean, they're not getting stimulated the way kids should be. Kids need to yeah. go outside and fall down. Like yeah. kids need to go eat dirt. Like, you know, do dumb <laughs> shit. Yeah. And they're all just getting shoved into these boxes where America just expects them to be right now because that's just how shit is. Yeah. It's sad. Yeah, and I agree. And I think that also extends. And again, I'm not a doctor. This is me assuming, like, that yeah. this is just me fucking assuming. But I would imagine that as you're growing up, your immune system it needs to get exposed to a mm-hmm. variety of things. And keeping these kids quarantined and keeping these kids in, like, you're going to damage their immune system in some way, yeah. shape, or form. And then along with that too, I mean, when, when you're in elementary school, middle school and high school, those are the years that you're forming. And by the end of high school, beginning of college, you're finishing off your social skills. But like, if you think about that, you could also argue that homeschooled kids are experiencing the same thing before, like before COVID, like they're, I have family that homeschools their kids. I'm very against it. That's my personal opinion. They're literally stuck inside all the time. Before COVID right. happened, they were stuck at home. Yeah. They had their homeschool friends. You know, they could go to the park and stuff like that. But they're so emotionally and socially delayed for their age. Yeah. Well, there's that stigma about this. The, oh, he's homeschooled. Look at him. He's sitting a weirdo. A, yeah, he's, yeah, he's <laughs> sitting in the corner. What a loser. It's like, so yeah, you're, stunt, you, you're, you're stunting their growth. 
I think like I'm a firm believer in just like, and I wish my parents would have done it more to me is just pushing your kids out there and being like, dude, go, like, I'll be here to support you, but you need to do this. Yeah. You need to experience people for what they really are. Yeah. You're not going to be around these nice homeschool kids your whole life that everyone's super nice. And you know, real life is not like that. No. Yeah. And I mean, I, uh, when I was a kid, I really wanted to get into a martial art and mm. my dad was cool with it back when, back, back when he was around, he was cool with it. But my mom was very much protective. Like, no, he can't get hurt. Don't do it. <laughs> But like now I look back on it and I'm like, I really wish I would have gotten into a martial art. And I mean, I did boxing in high school and college a little bit, but, and that was my big goal for this year. Me, cause my girlfriend, she's obsessed with UFC. So she got me into that. And I was like, Oh, this is, fun. I was, a, I've always liked boxing, like watching boxing. I really got into UFC but on my own but watching it with her and her family. I was like, Oh, this is actually pretty cool. And so that was like our mutual goal for 2020 is like, yeah, we're going to find a place like when we both get situated in jobs, uh, which, and obviously that didn't happen as soon as we would like it because of COVID, yeah. uh, you know, when we get situated in a stable job where we can pay for classes, we're going to go, we're going to just, we're going to go find a, a, a gym, a martial arts gym. She can do what she wants to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. But point is three to four times a week, we're going to be getting punched in the face. Like <laughs> awesome. Right. But then COVID happened. Um, but I think that's super important. I mean, I think I, I, like me personally, I couldn't imagine having kids anytime soon. Having kids terrifies me. I know. Right. Yeah, it, yeah, it, <laughs> is, it, it terrifies me. But like, if that time ever came, you know, when they became uh, whatever age would probably be comfortable, I would encourage it. I wouldn't force them to do it, but I'm like, Hey, try it. You know, I think that's a very, I think it's a huge character builder. And I think that does at an early age that would show anyone how to interact socially. How do you interact yeah. with someone after you just got done fighting for three minutes? Well, and I think it was really, detrimental to my social anxiety as an adult now is my parents never made me play sports even as like a kid I did gymnastics when I was in elementary school and I never played a sport again ever and so now as an adult I'm kind of like eh, like I'm okay I don't I don't like to be on stage I don't like to be in front of crowds I don't like to be the center of attention which is why I'm not even having a wedding I don't want that attention I don't want all those eyes on me and so I'm always just like, I'm going to make my kids play sports. I'm going to be that asshole mom. That's like, go get your helmet. You're going to football, you know? And if there, there will become a point when they're old enough where they're like, mom, I hate it. I won't make them do it. But when yeah. they're younger, I want to push them out there. Cause my parents never did. And now I'm like terrified of things. So that's interesting. So you don't like being the center of attention, mm -hmm. but your main source of income is an only fans account. I don't do live. I'm always like things like I take my pictures and I take my videos and then I can sit behind my phone and just watch it all blow up and everyone be happy. And I don't have to be there for it. So I you, think it's very interesting. Go ahead. No, I was saying like, it's interesting that you can like, and again, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. That's just interesting to me how you can, you create Trust the content. <laughs> I've thought about it. I've definitely thought about it. It doesn't really make sense, but it's just the, the in-person interactions. Like I was so nervous to do this. Like I was so fucking nervous. And I mean, I can go be a functional adult, but if someone comes up to me in the grocery store and it's like, did you know how much the potatoes are or some, you know, just basic shit. I'm going to be like, Oh shit. I don't know. And then I'll be like, Oh, I think they're blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to go about my day and be like, they probably thought I looked weird. They probably thought I said that weird. I wonder how my face looked. Like, I'm very, like, people just scare the fuck out of me. And that's, like, something that I've been working on. And one of the biggest reasons that I became a psych major is because I want to understand, like, all these, like, issues that I have and why they happen to me because of the way I grew up. Interesting. So, yeah. Interesting. Because, like, again, like, I, I, I find that fascinating that you can just throw the content up and you almost, it sounds like you just kind of just detach from that and it's like who i am and what i create are very two different things i was gonna say it's it's almost like a persona that i have i would not consider my 
sex work persona to be who I really am because like I'm kind of like super weird I'm really nerdy you know like I have my social anxiety like I'm obsessed with animals you know I'm, I'm just like in a very eccentric weird person but then I have to be a sex worker and I can't be like super weird and be like do you like my Naruto posters hanging in my <laughs> living room you know I have to be like I have to be like sexy and like mysterious and you know it's not really who I am. So it's just like, I just go do all this stuff and I make all this money and I'm like, all right, cool. I get to go back to sitting in my sweats and, you know, never putting on makeup. And I think that's like, another thing is like, I've created this other person and it's like being a sex worker is not my personality. It's not who I am. It's just my job. Interesting. So you've, so like the way I'm taking that is like, you're almost like, like a film actor. You're just, you create the character. And you become that character on camera. You say your lines, whatever your lines are that day, and you kind of just move on from it. I was going to say, that's kind of the biggest things in like all the modeling that I've done. You're never really you. You put on your makeup, you put on an outfit, you take your clothes off, you know, like you become this different person. Like this particular photographer that I've worked with multiple times he always says, what music do you want to listen to? And every time I know I'm probably going to get some hate for this. Every time I'm always like, I want to listen to Russ. Cause I love Russ and I love the sensual mood that it puts me in. I think he's so hot and his voice is really hot. So we listen to Russ while we shoot. And like, when I look at those pictures, I swear to God, they don't look like me. It's insane because it's just the lighting, the angles, the way I'm feeling, you know, it's just, it's a different person. Interesting. So would you know, so strictly speaking like modeling like i know people will sometimes use the the term modeling for pornography but like modeling itself right mm-hmm. do you see do you see yourself getting into that as a career or is that just kind of one of those side things that you just do to get some extra cash so all the modeling i've done i've never gotten money for it i actually just really enjoy doing it Wow. I think it's really fun. I like getting into a different mindset. And I think it's really interesting to me psychologically how I can just put myself somewhere else. And I don't have to be me. And I think it's just super cool, like the art that I've made and the way that I can make my body look and make my face look just based off of angles and like shadows and stuff. Like I was saying, and every time I'm done, I'm always like, damn. And it like makes me feel so powerful. And like, like good is a woman because like, I can make this art with just my body. Interesting. I don't need like anything extra. It's literally just me standing in a room with sunlight and it's just super like, it makes me, they feel really good. Well, I mean, I mean, sense. fuck, man, that's awesome. <laughs> I mean, fuck, yo, seriously, like, I mean, that goes back to my argument of okay, you're not hurting yourself, you're not hurting other people, do your thing, and if it makes you feel great, it makes you feel like that's awesome. Like that, that's mm-hmm. awesome that you found that, and I think, I think a part of the mental health problem in this country is a lot of people just haven't found that, or mm-hmm. they don't take. Uh, I, I get that it'll take a different amount of initiative and amount of drive for everyone. You know, it's a case by case basis, but people don't take that initiative. They don't have that drive to find what it is that makes them so happy. And I mean, that's awesome that you did like congrats. Like that's awesome. You know, (laughs) thank you. So what I, but that's so I, I, again, not that I'm money centric because I'm certainly not, but money (laughs) does blow my mind when it comes to this. Yeah. So with your modeling, you don't get paid. Mm -mm. Is that your choice or is that just Uh, how it is? Um, I think it's because, so I've done all my modeling in Albuquerque. I've never done any kind of modeling in Virginia. Um, I had one guy reach out, but his stuff was just very generic and you could tell that he just enjoyed taking pictures of women. It wasn't for (laughs) the art of what you could do. Well, yeah. And I was just kind of like, nah, I'm good. So everyone that I've worked with in Albuquerque, it's only because they just like the way I look. And they're like, I just want to shoot with you. And I'm like, I just like to get my picture taken. 
And so it's just kind of like a mutual agreement. And I also don't think that I'm popular enough in the modeling industry in Albuquerque or at all to charge for it. I don't think anyone would pay to work with me just because I'm not super experienced. I don't think I'm that like amazing at it. I'm just, I just like it and I just think it's fun. So, so you, so I always assume then that you separate your modeling from your only fans. Like those two things don't mix. So I do post my uncensored modeling pictures on my only fans just because I have done boudoir and nude photography. So I post like the censored one on some of my Instagram and sometimes I do them on my Twitter. And so that's one of the biggest things as people see those super artsy pictures and I, I look, my body looks super different. It doesn't look, you know, I'm sitting here, you know, I'm slouching over. I got my belly, you know, it doesn't look like a real person. It looks like art. And so guys right. see that, especially and they're like, damn. And so they want to see it without the, the blemishes and the scribbles and stuff that's all covered. So I post those. Oh, so you make the, the stuff, you make it censored for Instagram. Yeah. So I right. uncensor okay. it for my only fans. And that usually drums up some attention just because okay. it's exciting because they can't see it. And okay. then they want to, so they'll go pay to see it. So, I mean, at least you're making some money for your modeling shoots. So I was going to say, because I would imagine the people that shoot you, they're making some sort of money off of you. I'm assuming. I was going to say, well, the only thing that really gets me is, so I've been published five times, I think. In like a and magazine? I have, or? Yeah, in oh, magazines. Shit. I And I have them. They're actually in this box behind me full of my books because I don't have a bookshelf. (laughs) Um, But I have never, I haven't gotten money from any of that. Even so people buy these magazines and I don't get any revenue. I don't really get any, like so many people bought this magazine that you're in this month. Like I don't get any credit other than my name and my at name on Instagram in these magazines. That's it. Well, first of all, that kind of pisses me off. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. So that's interesting that they put your at on Instagram. That just shows you how big fucking social media is. But I mean, yeah. it's, and the sad thing is you bringing that up. That's not an unfounded thing, which mm. really sucks. I mean, and the biggest one to come out recently, I don't know if you saw this, but Dave Chappelle, he just put out, he put out, um, it wasn't a stand up routine. It was just him talking to a microphone and the motherfucker's funny. So you're going to laugh at it. Yeah. But he put this thing and it's on his Instagram. And basically he brings up that recently, I think like a month and a half ago, Netflix and HBO max, they put up Chappelle show for streaming Mm -hmm. and a bunch of people. Like, have you seen Chappelle show? Yeah, I have. Okay. Thank God. Cool. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank God. So he, they threw up Chappelle show for streaming, but he got none of the revenue for it. He got, he did not get paid at all for the streaming uh, numbers that these services got. And basically he was like, look, I get it. I was young. I was, I think he said he was like 24, 25, mm-hmm. maybe younger when he did Chappelle show. And he's like, look, they sat me down in a room of, with a bunch of people, a bunch of dudes in suits. And they said, this is a good contract. You should sign it. I had my lawyer look at it. He told me it was the best I could get at the time because he wasn't Dave Chappelle yet. He was yeah. Dave Chappelle, the decent stand-up comedian. Yeah. And so he's like, this is the best you're going to get. You should sign it. And I forget the like specific terminology that he got, but basically it was like, uh, we, if you sign this contract, we meaning comedy central, we own the rights to the title Chappelle show. We own the rights to your, uh, to your likeness in Chappelle show and through our distribution and any distribution in the universe, like what? the word, yeah, the word universe was in the contract. Fuck. Yeah. So, so he goes up on stage and he's talking about it and he tells this whole story. It's like an 18 minute long video. And he tells this whole story about how he's not getting paid and he's not getting all this. And he's like, listen, like, it's my fault. I signed the contract. Yeah. But that doesn't negate the fact that it's fucked up. So if you guys think that I was ever funny, if you, if I've ever entertained you, just do me a favor. Don't watch the Pell show on Netflix or HBO max. I'm not, he literally says, I'm not telling you to boycott a service boycott me. Just don't, just don't, just don't watch it. 
And I, I think that's so interesting because how big Chappelle's show is and yeah. how big Chappelle's show got uh, like almost like a second following after he did those Netflix specials. Uh, just a new generation got to watch Chappelle's show. I just think it's, uh, somebody as big as Dave Chappelle isn't getting paid for what's arguably his biggest work. I was going to say, I feel like it's one thing that I, because people would ask me, I'd post about being published and people would be like, oh, what's the link? I'm going to go buy it. And I almost didn't want to give it because I was like, why don't you give me the money and then I'll buy it and mail it to you. You know, I was trying to figure out some way to get around it, but I would argue that like just having your picture and like a, like not like some big fancy magazine, they're just like small photography magazines. I, it sucks that I don't get paid for it, but it's not that big of a deal. But like the fact that it's like a whole ass show and it's him talking and moving and doing stuff. And like, he put, like blood, sweat, and tears into that. And they're just like, sorry, it's ours. Well, it it drove the poor guy insane. Like that's why that's why he ran off to that's well, that was he funny, he brings that up in the video too. Is he goes, Yeah, after Chappelle's show, I decided that I needed to have a little retreat, a little me time. So I went to South Africa because I wanted to go to South Africa and I had the fuck you money to go to South Africa. <laughs> but but the he pissed off the, the suits at Comedy Central. And I mean, from their perspective, I get it. Their biggest star decided to jump ship. So yeah. the media spun it as Dave Chappelle is insane. He has <laughs> gone to, he's gone to uh, South Africa. And that's why his return was so huge. Cause it's like, yeah. where have you been for the past seven to 12 years? Oh, that's crazy. I didn't oh. know he was gone for that long. Oh, he was gone for a while. Oh yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. And, and it's funny because now, during COVID, uh, I mean, obviously stand-up clubs have been shut down. The biggest one being the comedy store in Los Angeles. And uh, I'm pretty sure it's Los Angeles. And but what he did is he lives out like somewhere in Ohio. And yeah, he lives out in Ohio <laughs> on a ranch. Yeah, on a ranch with his wife and he's in his family and he hangs out. But I guess during COVID, he found an outdoor wedding venue and he would just do shows. And people would show up and they'd just watch Dave Chappelle live and he'd just be chilling. <laughs> oh, that's good for him though. Cause I feel like he probably does it just cause that's what he loves to do. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I mean like. Good for Dave Chappelle. Uh, no. Yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> and, I, and I think it's funny. Uh, cause in the beginning of the pandemic, uh, cause like middle of last year is when I super got into watching Joe Rogan's podcast mm -hmm. because I remember I found it like five years ago when I was in high school, five, six years ago. I looked at it. I was like, oh, that's cool. How long is a video? It was like three hours. I was like, fuck. You're that. like, damn. Yeah, no, thank you. I'm not watching something for three hours. And but I got into it last year. And now with the pandemic, he has all these comedians on, and they're like, I can't do stand-up. It's dead. Da, da, da. And at first I was like, oh boo-hoo. Fuck you. <laughs> oh no, I can't talk into a microphone. Fuck you. But then I started thinking about it more as the pandemic went on. And I was like, this is what these people love to do like yeah. this is this was their psychological thing and like for me my big thing is weightlifting like i fucking yeah. loved weight and i actually was training for a bodybuilding show in the beginning of the year and then covid dude i'm sorry <laughs> and that then covid blows. And so, so i thought about it and i was like oh so i lift weights and no one gives a fuck about me <laughs> Like I lift weights and no one gives a shit, but like these people, they make a lot of people happy. Right. And I would imagine that's going to feed that psyche somehow. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, and so having that taken away, it, it's gotta be insane. And I think, I think another thing about COVID that brought up about celebrities was I would love for someone to sit down with whoever the affluent stars are of this year, the movie stars, Instagram, influencers and see like what's wrong because there is something wrong but no seriously i but there is something wrong and the biggest tell of that was did you see like back in oh man like april or may when all those movie stars came out and they did that imagine video do you remember that were there, there all 
they're all singing, aren't they? Yeah, where they're all yes. Imagine, and it's like, fuck you. We're not <laughs> all in this together. Must be nice. Yeah. How how much money did you make from fucking the three seconds you had on screen? No, exactly. It's like we're not all in this together. Like, and our, and then the talk show hosts, they all did their ho- their shows from their houses. Yes, and so it's like. Okay, what does that say when you can do a multi-billion dollar show from your living room? Mm-hmm. That A, your living room is nice enough to do it from. <laughs> like, I'm shooting, right? this in, I'm, I'm shooting this in a garage. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, and so your living room is nice enough to shoot that from A. And B, that people will still watch. And I remember, yeah. I think it was, it was either Fallon or Colbert that had Seth Rogen on like right when we were just knuckle deep in the pandemic. And this dude, he was obviously high as a kite. And, and he goes, he goes, yeah, I don't know what's going on, man, but like, we are not all in this together. Cause I am. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there. I'm like, okay, yes, but also fuck you too. You don't got to <laughs> say it. You don't have to say it. We're all thinking it, but you don't have to point it out like that. Yeah. So, like, I just, I don't know where I was going with this. But the point <laughs> is, it's like, it, I just, like, this pandemic has brought out a lot of weird things. And to to tie this back into almost this, the main subject of this episode, I just, when I saw so many people coming out with OnlyFans, I was like, I get it. And if it works, it works. But the one thing I do have to talk about is, so since I've been doing sex work and like selling and being a content creator for, since I was 18, so we're doing like eight, nine, 10, five years almost. I'm almost 24. When I started being a sex worker, it was so frowned upon and so looked down upon. And I had to keep it like so low key and such a secret And now everyone's doing it and everyone's all about it and everyone's okay with it. And it almost pisses me off that it took the world getting shut down for women to come out and be like, I'm going to be a sex worker. And everyone's like, oh, you go. Like, we know you can't make money right now. We know that you're doing just, you know, what you got to do. We support you. But three years ago, if people found out that I was doing it, I was getting made fun of and bullied and like harassed on the internet. And it's like, it sucks that it takes such huge, huge things for people to accept stuff or just to ignore it or to just be like, Oh, okay, this is happening. And it just really pisses me off. No, I mean, and I get it. Like I see where you're coming from. And, and I mean, and again, I haven't studied it, but just, at face value, sex work is one of the oldest. Um, it's, it's just one of the oldest job fields for humanity. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's one of the oldest things. Like, I, like, I remember that maybe this is not the best point of reference, but I remember as a kid <laughs> watching like the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Yes. And I would think it's funny when Jack Sparrow would go to different ports and get slapped by the, the prostitutes. All the women. They're prostitutes. And <laughs> as a kid, as a kid, I'm like, ah, he got slapped by a woman in a funny dress. But watching it as an adult, I'm like, oh, so Jack Sparrow <laughs> go oh. and fuck prostitutes and probably not pay them or promise them things that he never followed. Oh, my on. God. And now they're mad. And that's way back in like what the 14, 1500s. Mm-hmm. And, and there's and there's evidence of sex work going back to ancient Rome and the Egyptians in their times. So yeah, I mean, it sucks that it's demonized. And I mean, so like me personally, my religious views are are definitely Christian. Like that is what I identify with, that mm-hmm. is what I follow. But like I feel like a lot of uh hate. And a lot of discrimination and a lot of harassment and bullying is based in religion, whether it's people yeah. that deeply believe uh, religions such as Christianity, Mormonism, Judaism, down to the letter, you know, where they 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 just and, and I hate saying it, but like a lot of things that I see from Christianity specifically where people want to choose 
very specific things to believe in, but they negate a whole lot of other things that doesn't fit their narrative. Like that's where it's coming from. Like, yes, sex outside of marriage, that is a sin in Christianity. You are correct. But if we're going to take Christianity and dissect it, like, what do you, what do you choose? Cause you're very clearly choosing to believe certain things. Yeah. And, and the way that I view Christianity and the way that I approach it is like, yeah, in the old Testament, people were getting fucking burned at the stake. God was wiping out a bunch of people. Plagues were happening. The angels were coming through and cutting off kids like heads and stuff like a bunch of insanity was happening. Yeah. But they, in the new Testament, Jesus showed up and was like, Hey man, I get it. Humans suck, but it's okay. I'm here. It's okay. I got you. Yeah, Daddy's home, man. Like, <laughs> like it's cool. All you got to do is believe these things, ask for forgiveness and genuinely believe it. And we're cool. We're cool, man. Like <laughs> yeah, solid. Yeah, yeah, we're cool. And like, and, and the, I mean, there is still the one, uh, unforgivable sin, which is like denouncing God and denouncing <laughs> that and the other, mm-hmm. which I get. What's up dog. And, uh, and, and like, I just, I, I thrust myself and, and, and that's like, when, like when people that are Christians in my family, I never like, I never had a, <laughs> it's okay. I never had an answer, like a solid answer, I guess, to the question mm-hmm. of how are you following Jesus in your life? And I'm like, ah, oh, I'm 15. I don't know, you know, but like now like now, because I've 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 been asked that question pretty regularly from members of my family that are very like Christian and, and are very very affluent in that. Not that I'm not, but just like those people that 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 follow that to the, very closely. And I'm like, how am I doing it? Well, uh, God, He talked to everyone. Jesus talked to everyone when He was on Earth, and that and that was without even taking Jesus into my goals in the beginning, like that was my plan with this podcast. Like I was saying a little earlier, like I want to talk to everybody. I want to yeah. talk to fucking everyone. And so to bring this back around to my point, I just think like a lot of harassment that sex workers receive is rooted in religion, which sucks because well, the... Go ahead. No, 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 finish. No, say what you're going to say. So touching back on what I said earlier is I keep my, my sex work life off of Facebook because I have so much family on there. My entire mom's side of my family is Mormon. I love them to death. They're good people, but they are so, so fucking judgmental. Yeah. I am one of the, the very few, probably one of the only people in my family tree that came out and was like, I'm going to tattoo my body. I'm going to get piercings. I'm going to go through my emo and my scene phase, you know, like all this crazy shit, but everyone else in my family is like pure and conservative and doesn't have tattoos and, you know, maybe pierce their nose like, Oh, right. And so they're already so judgmental of who I am. And they just look at me and they're like, what the fuck is Michelle doing? except they don't say fuck, but they're always wondering like how my mom raised me, why I ended up this way, why I look this way, why I have such a fucking mouth of a sailor. I mean, so I have to keep it a secret and it's almost sad that I'm just like, I can't just be who I am right? because I have so many people in my life that would be like, what the fuck are you doing? And so I think being a sex worker is very good way to like, show the people that want to be in your life versus don't because if they find out and they leave like obviously they don't like support you and like love you enough and they'll pick their own views over just like what you're doing because they don't agree with it and like going back to just like religion anyhow I'm taking a religions class this semester I've wanted to take this class my entire life I've been really looking forward to it and it is the worst class I've ever taken it has been terrible. Okay. So I went through like all sorts of different religions when I was a teenager through Buddhism and Hinduism. And before that I was Mormon and then I was Christian. And I just, you know, I was trying to figure out who I was. And as an adult, I finally landed in Satanism. And of course that sounds super scary, but like, I don't actually believe in Satan, but I've talked about it a lot in my religions class and the amount of backlash I get 
from the Christians and the Mormons is just sad because they don't realize that I'm not over here, like sacrificing rabbits and like drawing blood on my forehead and like hailing Satan. I'm actually over here, like being a good person and like being good to others and like taking care of the earth, but they just see what they want to see because they're, they've just been brainwashed. And I really appreciate that you're so open-minded and you can see things for what they are and not like something else. Like that's so fucking cool. That's just a side note. Uh, This is what, like, this is a prime example of what I've hoped my podcast would go for is something that (laughs) is very controversial, but I want people I want people of all views to be able to like, cause like my whole thing is, do I want people to watch this podcast? 100%. But at an absolute bare minimum, I get an education on something I probably wouldn't otherwise. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, so I, I brought up with my buddies that I was filming with uh, a month ago, you know, and I want to get back to what you're saying for sure. But no, like, go ahead. but like me personally, one thing that just, I can't wrap my head around is supremacy of any kind of any kind of supremacy. Cause like, I love studying history. Right. And I love studying, studying military history. I like studying uh war. Um, I like studying, uh, uh, God, what's, what would be the term for it? Like, um, like why societies end up being the way they are. Like why yeah. did, why did Rome fall? Why did the, why did the, general populace of Germany follow Hitler, right? <laughs> yeah. Why did a small group of colonists actually think they could beat, you know, the greatest military on earth at the time and create it's America? Psychological. Like, how did they do that? Right. <laughs> so, so one thing that I can't, I, I can't wrap my head around is like, why is supremacy a thing? Like why, why genuinely, why does someone believe that because I am this skin color because I have this religion because I have this belief I am better than everyone else. And at the most extreme, I will kill people because they are different. Right? So a point that I've brought up with a couple of my buddies is like, obviously, you know, as a, uh, as a Hispanic male, if I could guarantee myself a level of safety, I would honestly enjoy and welcome the opportunity to sit down with a supremacist, specifically white supremacy, because that's such a huge thing in our country right now. Sadly, yeah. I don't know why the fuck Nazis came back, but they're back. <laughs> but no, seriously, 2020, like, dude, like, I why, swear to God, like, why are the, why are these things happening? And I would love to sit down with someone of that belief system. And I would just start the conversation, say, good afternoon. Why? And let that person talk, explain, no, explain yourself seriously. And, and, and best case scenario, there is a conversation that lasts for however long it lasts and people get to see a perspective. Right. And they, and, 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 and I get to expose a perspective for more than likely almost guaranteed how ugly it is. Mm -hmm. And then at the worst of it, it just gets so bad that I cut it off early and people get to see that this person's a dick bag. So, you know what I mean? So, but to go back to, so explain satanism so, as a religion so first of all so like to kind of break this down explain what it is what is that belief system and why are you aligning yourself with it right now okay so i think the biggest thing oh, i've never had to like fully talk about it like no one's ever asked me so many questions usually people are like oh you don't believe in satan okay cool that's what i thought and that's usually the end of the conversation So one of the biggest things that draws me to it is the fact that you believe in yourself as God. You are your own God. You are the one that you are supposed to be worshiping and like praising and asking questions to because I have always been kind of a believer, like even as a teenager, I always felt that God was within me. If there was a God, I couldn't understand or comprehend the concept of there being a God that was above me. Because I just was like, why would God want to be above me if we're supposed to be, like, equal? I don't know. Religion's been very hard for me. It was very forced upon me as a child. So as an adult, I think one of the reasons I also went with Satanism is because that was the ultimate way that I could rebel. I wanted to go with something that was so left field that people would be like, what the fuck? And so... That's why I kind of started with Hinduism and Buddhism when I was a teenager, because it's really all about self-love, 
not hurting other people, not hurting other animals. Um, I know a lot of the, the Hinduism and Buddhist religions are vegetarian. I could never do it. I tried, but I love steak too much. But when I finally started dabbling in Satanism, once I moved to Virginia, I realized how misunderstood it was. And I also very much so related with that because I've felt very misunderstood my entire life for being so different from my family. And it really is just about like, you don't steal, cheat, you don't lie, you don't trespass, you don't commit adultery, you don't harm animals or children, like no rape, no pedophilia, like, but also if you're going to make mistakes and sin, it's okay. Like you're going to fuck up. You're going to do bad things. And that's another thing I really appreciated is going through what I did as a teenager and a child. I rebelled so hard and I did unspeakable things to myself and others. And I've wanted to be better than who I used to be. And so the fact that I found a religion that was like, dude, if you're going to be better, it's okay. Just don't do it again. And it just, it feels very welcoming and safe, honestly, because I feel like I'm a part of a couple groups on Facebook and every single person on there is so nice and so understanding and so welcoming. And like, I swear to God, I could tell them I just fucking shot a person. I don't know. I shot a person when I was a kid, but if I promised to never do it again, or if I changed or whatever, they would be like, dude, it's okay. Like if there was a reason for it, not if I just killed someone in cold blood, but it's the acceptance and the feeling of like home almost because I couldn't find that anywhere else. I felt very out of place. Dabbling in Mormonism and Christianity is just, I was too different and I was too rebellious and there was rules that I didn't want to comply with. And then with Hinduism and Buddhism, I just felt like I couldn't follow all the rules and just the fact of how uh, like disciplined they are. Like I could not get there. And so I just never fully felt accepted there either. And so once I moved to Virginia, I just like stumbled upon it. I bought the satanic Bible, which is actually, I thought it was in here. Usually it's in there. But I bought the Satanic Bible. I read it. I've read the certain ways, um, like the certain ways that it can go, but I'm still really new in it. So I can't really dabble in like the Anton LaVey Satanism versus like the other people that I'm still learning because people are very choosy about whose version of Satanism they want to follow. So that's like a whole nother can of worms that I haven't so, gotten to. So who is Anton LaVey? Cause I've, cause I've never, uh, I've never heard of that individual. So who's he or she? I'm so assuming he. he's basically the creator of Satanism as it is today in the fact of like the, is it the 11 satanic rules or the 10 satanic rules? He created all of those. And those are the ones that I was talking where it was like, do not trespass, do not create or do not commit adultery. Um, do not abuse animals, do not have sexual contact with children. They're very, they're written in a very like old English kind of way. So I'm trying to give them verbatim, but they're definitely way cooler when you read his, but basically he was like the one and only, like he was the head Satanist and everyone wanted to follow his rules and how he, uh, how he, not perceived, but how he would make people perceive Satanism. And I know that there's other people, but I can't even think of their names. So, okay. So when, so in, in your uh, method of practicing this religion and moving forward with it in your life. So what role does Satan play in your life? So he actually doesn't play a role at all. Um, Satan is just a symbol of like doing your own thing and not following like society or conf uh, confining yourself to a religion really. So you, it's almost like you're using the, how I put this, like you're using like the imagery of yes. Satan 
as a way to rebel. So it's like a, it's almost like a direct inverse on, on what Christianity, like on what Christianity projects. Yeah. But you're not following Satan specifically. No. And with, I mean, just hearing you say two of the satanic uh, rules or satanic what rules. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Like that almost sounds like a, uh, they're comparable to the 10 commandments. Yeah. That's the other thing is like, they're very similar. They're just written in a different way. So I guess the biggest, so what I'm, what I'm getting from this is the biggest difference between the form of Satanism that you follow and Christianity that I personally follow Mm -hmm. is I believe that there is a God that is above us, that, Mm. that he's, he's not running the show because he gave us free will, but he created this. He's, he created the sim board. He is letting the Sims run wild. (laughs) And in Satanism, you were your own God of your own world. Yeah. And like, the other thing about Satanism is a lot of people don't believe that there is a heaven or hell. I personally agree with that, but a huge part of it is also not believing in any kind of ghosts or spirits or residual energy or things like that, or reincarnation that I don't agree with. I'm a huge believer in the paranormal and being reincarnated. Cause I, I literally think it's impossible for energy, like someone's soul to just disappear. Like that shit's got to go somewhere. Okay. So I, I truly, truly believe in reincarnation. Like my service dog, I swear to God is the reincarnated version of my dog. When I was a kid, like they look exactly the same. It's insane. But those are the things that are different that I just don't agree with, but yeah, no heaven or hell. Okay. So as far as, so, so when you die, Mm-hmm. You humans will be reincarnated as humans. Like everyone follows their like the line of their species. So I base my belief in reincarnation off of is it Hinduism? It's Hinduism or Buddhism. And basically how you act in your life, how you treat others, the bad things that you do, if you can fix those bad things, I mean, is the level of life that you're gonna get brought into after you die. So like, if you're like a murderer or serial rapist in this life, you're going to go to the bottom of the food chain and be a fucking cockroach. And then you kind of get stuck there. That's one of the things I've never fully understood is once like you're constantly trying to be better than whoever you were in your past life. So you can keep being at the top of the food chain. Otherwise you permanently get stuck at the bottom, which I think is kind of hard to comprehend. Cause even myself, as I say it out loud, I'm kind of like, well, because I mean, just me hearing that, right? Like, let's assume that was the reality of our situation as humans, yeah. right? Like, like you know, you have people, and eventually, there's gonna be that one shitty person. Those shitty people get knocked down to insects. Yeah. Well, if they all got knocked down to insects, then eventually, this would be an entire planet of insects. Eventually, you know, in theory, it's because nobody there. Like, there's always gonna be shitty people. I believe there's more good than bad, but like eventually we just have a place full of fucking cockroach eaters. But that's interesting. Um, so, so you said you borrow that, uh, you borrow a piece of that from Hinduism, and so you mostly align yourself with the the satanic side of things. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay, I mean, yeah, because I've just again, like, I personally have never sat down and talked with somebody about what it means to have that religion in their life. That's just really fucking interesting. I think, I think it's just really cool because a lot of the, a lot of the people that I became uh, associated with when I moved to Virginia really talked about it a lot, but they were like, like fake Satanists, like fake Christians, like fake Mormons, you know, the people that are actually really bad down to the core but they like to act like it because they just think it's fucking cool. They think like, because it's cool to be like, yeah, hell Satan, you know, but they don't realize that like when they go out and do all these drugs and then like get on their motorcycle and drive intoxicated or hurt their friends or hurt their girlfriends, like they're not following those rules. They're just doing it because it's fucking cool and it looks cool and they're rebellious. And so that actually 
was one of the biggest things that I wanted to actually research it and look into it. Cause I was like, aren't you supposed to be good people? Cause even when I've researched about it in the past, it was never what people actually thought it was. I mean, I've listened to countless podcasts about it. Love it. And so that's what made me, like I said, just really, really dive in and get into it. And now none of those people are part of my life anymore because they're just toxic and they're fake and they just want to look good. And I think that's a lot of people in Mormon and Christianity as well is they're not actual followers. They're just like, they have a label, but they're actually like super judgy and bad people. Interesting. No, I mean, yeah, that's, um, and that's a sad reality. I mean, like for me, and it's, it's, I think that's, I think the thing I find the most interesting about first, first of all, there's multiple forms of state, Satanism. I'm never, I never knew that. Um, and also that the one that you've chosen is you take God within yourself. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I just think that's interesting. And, um, cause like for me, you know, I, I grew up in a very Christian household, uh, and as I grew up, as I feel a lot of teenagers do, they just get confused and they're like, hey, wait a minute. Why is this this? And why does this yeah. go this? And why does this happen? And I kind of, I never in my life fully denounced Christianity. I just questioned it a lot. And I was like, but why is this? Why is that? But I also, being a dumb teenager, I never just like, I had questions, but I never took it upon myself to find the answers. And I use that as an excuse, you know? But then growing up, I just did a lot of stupid shit and yeah. with, my, with my buddies and we, we did some really stupid things and, we all do and in Albuquerque. And yeah. And, and I, and me and my <laughs> friends, like we'll sit around and we'll be like, okay, we didn't kill anybody. Thank God. We didn't, you know, yeah. we didn't kill ourselves. We didn't kill other people. We didn't harm injure ourselves too bad, but how are we alive? How are we not in jail? Like, holy crap. Like we could have done, we never did illegal things or like, but like, we just got like, we inched it. We were like so close. <laughs> and, and, and I just think about that growing up. And then I think about a lot of good things that have happened in my life as well. And a lot of things that I did make it out of that. I don't know how, whether it's physically, emotionally, financially, mm-hmm. it's like, how in the world did I do that? And the way that I chalk those things up is like, there is no way that there isn't a God above me. And there's no way that there isn't a higher power Mm -hmm. because I wouldn't be here. There is no way I am convinced of that. And like, and I just, and I, and I tell her it every day. And, 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 um, for me personally, you know, I'm very blessed to have, excuse me. I am very blessed to have found someone that has the same religious views that I have and their family has the same religious views. It all, it all melds together very nice and very totally. well. And um, after me, because at one point I was engaged as a very young, stupid 19 to 20 year old. <sighs> so dumb. And um, I remember when I was in my stupid little 500 square foot apartment, my buddies, and I remember just having a moment to myself and I talked to God and I was like, you know what, dude? Uh, I'm kind of done with women. They suck. (laughs) And, uh, but let me tell you, I will get into a serious relationship again. Whenever I find a chick that is a Christian, well out of my league, loves comic books and superheroes, video games into hardcore heavy metal music and actually likes me back go. And then three years later, I run into my girlfriend at a Barnes and Noble in the comic book section. And, and yeah, and then I'm oh, like, what? yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, oh, you're what up the there. Fuck? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> you're up there. All right, dope. And, and, um, I mean, out of the animosity that we spoke of before the episode started, I mean, we, I mean, we had our road bumps and speaking like every relationship does, but she stuck with it. But yeah. God, God bless her. I don't know how, but she did. And, um, and like, it's just like stuff like that happening where I'm like, there's just no way there's not, there's no way there's not. (laughs) (laughs) So I think one of the reasons that I basically denounced, um, like all religion was growing up. I used to spend the summers in Utah with my grandmother and my step grandpa and my cousins. And 
it was, it was a lot of fun when me and my cousins were there together and like when we could hang out with our friends and stuff like that, but we had to go to church every Sunday and I hated it. Uh, Mormon church used to be three hours long. Now it's only two hours. Um, so imagine being like nine years old, trying to sit through an hour of sacrament, an hour of like your class of your age, and then another hour of like coming back together. It was <laughs> so fucking boring. And of course, like, I didn't understand it. I didn't know what the fuck they were talking about. I only spent my summers here. Like I wasn't going to church when I was back home. I was just like, up, like pissed off about it. I was like, I don't want to go to church, grandma. I don't want to wear a dress, grandma, you know? And then started spending my summers out here in Virginia with my uncle and then my aunt. And when I stayed at my uncle's, my uncle actually gave me a dress code. And it was the Mormon dress code. So Mormons wear what are called garments underneath their clothes. And so their clothes have to cover their garments. And so I had a dress code like that. So coming from in New Mexico, it gets hot as fuck there, but it's not humid. Out here, you walk outside and you're wet. Yeah. Like it is disgusting. And so wearing capris and t-shirts all summer, I was angry. Yeah, and I was like, Why? I spent some time in Georgia and, uh, uh, yeah. And just the, him always telling me like, like my aunts and my uncles and stuff like that, always being like, well, I don't think heavenly father would be happy if he knew you were doing that. Or maybe you should listen to the Holy ghost when he tells you, you shouldn't do that. And just the constant like pressure I felt as a kid and as a young teenager, it made me have this extreme resentment for a higher power or religion of any type because I couldn't just figure it out. Like they didn't just go like, do you want to read this? Like, why don't you think about this? Cause even now my, my grandma, bless her heart. She will come over and be like, are you in your fiance? Are you being pure? And I'm like, grandma, I'm 23 and he's 28. Don't worry about it. And she's always like, my heavenly father just wants to know. And I'm like, and it's just so weird for me. Like, I just don't understand it. And I, I wish that I could, I wish I could understand like the way that you feel because there's only been two times in my life that I've talked to God because I was at the lowest fucking point of my life. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. And I was just like, dude, if you're up there, like help. <laughs> but I mean, I ended up getting out of it obviously, but even now I just, it was because of something else. No, hey, I mean, it makes I just, a lot of, that makes, I mean, I, I understand the point of view that you're coming from. Like, yeah. I get it. I still see the thing as a little kid. Um, I want to take a quick intermission because I did not pee before this and <laughs> I am about to explode, but I want to continue <laughs> this conversation. Good. I love this conversation. I won't hit pause on anything because it just be easier on the back end to edit. So just give okay. me two seconds. I'll be right was- back. Okay. So as I was saying, or as you were saying, um, so I understand like where you're coming from with like, cause like as a kid, like I kind of got those talks too. Now granted it never got so far as a dress code, but um, like, yeah, I remember getting uh, spoken to and getting the, uh, like the notion of, Oh, you know, God's always watching uh, follow your life to be closer to him like this, that, and the other. And like, yeah, I was taken to church every Sunday for the most part of my upbringing. Um, and I think like religion was super pushed on me as a kid going into middle mm-hmm. school. But as I went into high school and as like I said, I went away for high school. So I would come back for like breaks and summers and so on and so forth. And that continued, you know, through freshman year of high school, sophomore year of college. And in doing that, I just, I didn't like going to church. And I even tried going to church in the city that I went to school at. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I I recognize that I should do this. I recognize that my religion calls me to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to do this. And I just, I couldn't sit through it. Like I was just so like immensely bored. And, and I just, and whenever, now granted, these are definitely due to the fact of like the different churches that I would go to. Um, There is one in town that I do enjoy. Um, and I'll go there every now and again. <clears throat> I mean, I haven't recently because of COVID. Yeah. But um, like up until 
probably like a year and a half, two years ago, because even then I wouldn't go to church a hundred percent of the time. It would just be very sporadic. But like, like in those years, I was just like, either the church that I'm going to is too commercial and this is generic as hell. And I, nothing about this is personalized the way that I'm taking it. Mm -hmm. Or it just seems like the pastor himself just, he was just there. Like, I have no doubt that this person believes it and all that, but like, I just wasn't like when I was digesting this, I just didn't get it as like, they're giving it their all. I'm going to be yeah. honest. So I just, I couldn't thrust myself into that. And so like the way that I find myself now, when I, as I'm growing up a little bit, becoming more of an adult, I find myself practicing my religion through like, because uh, like I it would be defined as prayer. But whenever I pray, I just act like I'm having a conversation because that's yeah. where I feel comfortable. Yeah, and and so like to go back into uh, my view is like when all these things were happening and all the stupidity that I just got myself in as a kid. You know, that's like that is just what made the most sense to me is like, okay, I got out, out of all this crap because there's a God and all these good things that happened to me. Like, yes. Did I work hard? Definitely. Did I put my best foot forward? Did I really try and these things that accomplished? Yes. But the results of a lot of these things, I just, that's what I just chalked it up to. Yeah. You know, but I just, I find that because like, like before an hour and 45 minutes ago, uh, <laughs> I would, like, if you were to ask me what Satanism, I think, well, I mean, I would imagine they're not all horrible people, but they are people that believe in the devil. They follow Satan. Uh, maybe the extremists will sacrifice a goat or two. Uh, I mean, they draw pentagrams and they have their own version of a book they read. Like that's, that's my extent, but I find it interesting that they, that again, the form of Satanism that you've chosen to follow by Anton who? LeVay. LeVay yeah. is you take God within yourself. That's the most interesting to me. Well, and like, don't get me wrong. There is forms of Satanism that do the absolute extreme where they, well, well right. And I, that's what sucks is that like, that's what it's most known for. And so becoming a Satanist and just enjoying it so much and loving the people and loving how I feel, I think I get the most joy of spreading, not like spreading the word of God, you know, like just like when people want like if I just bring it up and people want to know, I enjoy telling people that like, don't think it's all bad because it's not. Right. And I just get like extreme fucking joy from that. Cause it's just like, I get to expand their mind a little bit and it makes me feel good because I love my mind to be expanded. So I like to right. help others expand their fucking mind. Right. No, I mean, that's, and, and, and that's how I, that's how I am about Christianity as well. Cause I mean, like I, uh, I certainly don't push a narrative and I don't push my uh, religion on whether it's like by friends or um, family, people I come in contact with, my girlfriend, whoever, like, don't get me wrong. I, with the very close people to me in my life, mm -hmm. uh, i.e. my friends and my girlfriend, you know, we've all certainly, I've had one-on-one -on -one conversation or like a group conversation with my friends about religion. And, um, it's, it's, uh, like they know where I stand. It's like, you know what, if you want to hear about it, ask me questions, man. I'll tell you as much information as I know. Cause I'm not a, I'm not a scholar on the yeah. subject by any means. I just know what I believe. I know what I've read in the Bible and what I can retain from that. And I, I was telling my, my point of view and where I stand, but, and I know, you know, for an almost certainty that out of the like six, seven really close friends that I have, you know, probably more than that, but the, like the, the very, the, the, the tight knit group that I have. Yeah. I know for almost certainty that, you know, A, B and C aren't Christians, but I'm not going to love them any less. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, Cause that's just also what that religion calls you to do. Like you don't, you don't love them any less, like recognize, recognize what the situation is. Recognize. I mean, if you want to 
phrase it as, you know, recognize sin, recognize that, recognize what's going on. But I mean, don't shun them for it. That, you know? that makes me think about, so most of the people in my mom's side of the family are very accepting of the fact that I just don't follow what they do. They don't know the depths of my religion. They don't know my work, you know, but they're all just like, that's Michelle. She's, she's a fucking weirdo, you know, but I do have certain family members that are very, very standoffish, very cold, very just fucking weird around me because they know that I'm just not Mormon. And it's like, it's literally like what it comes down to. It's like, I'm not Mormon and I don't want to be like you. And so they're all just like, like grossed out by me. It's very like, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt my feelings because I've grown up with this, but it's just so weird. And I wish that people weren't like that. And I wish like we were talking about earlier that people would just be okay with people being themselves and like why we're so concerned with like, they're not this, they're not that like, it's okay. Yeah. But to them, to them, it's not. No, yeah. And I mean, God, I had a train of thought. Oh, my goodness. Um, but no, I, I, I get what you're saying. And I mean, that, that sucks. Oh, yes, what I was going to say is like from just a strategic point of view, if you're trying to convince anyone that your blank is the right way, you should be presenting the best version of that. I mean, mm -hmm. you should be presenting the best possible sales pitch of whatever it is you're talking about. So even if for whatever reason, uh, Christianity accepted the shunning of people because of X, Y, and Z, it's mm -hmm. not a good idea. Like if you want to convert people to your religion, no, seriously. Right. Like don't if you tell them that we're going to go like cut people's heads off because they don't agree, like no, be yeah. gone. No. Yeah. Like don't like, if you want to convert people to your way of life in any facet of whatever it is, if you're trying to convert someone from Xbox to PlayStation, <laughs> don't tell them that all PlayStation members kill babies. You know, like don't, <laughs> yeah. like don't don't tell them horrible things that may or may not be true. Like just don't. And I don't. Yeah, because I've never agreed with that either. With the shunning of people for whatever reason, and that goes back to the point that I brought up about how I don't understand supremacy. Mm -hmm. Um. But so talking strategy itself, one kind of going back to the OnlyFans conversation, mm -hmm. one thing I'm curious, I've always been curious about is like, how do you, like, what's your marketing strategy? <laughs> like, how do you, how do you do that? I know you brought up Twitter. I know you brought up a little bit of an Instagram thing, but like, how do you like mass market as much as you can your profile? Okay. So my... <laughs> my journey started on Tumblr. Okay. Back when Tumblr was cool, <laughs> you know, before they took all the porn off. So that's where I learned, you know, just like the hashtags, the like, is lewd photos, the right word, like kind of like sexy looking, but you're still kind of covering, you know, yeah, lewd is the right word. Yeah. Yeah. So posting lewd pictures, uh, like I said, hashtags and not, giving up. I think that's the most annoying part about this is you, if you get lazy, like if I start getting lazy, because like, I think my following's like pretty good. Like right now you asked me the other day, right now I have 92 followers on OnlyFans, So I'm feeling pretty good. Right. You know, doing good. But as the month goes on, if someone just doesn't like your content or you don't have stuff that they're into, they'll unsubscribe. So usually throughout the month, like towards right in the middle, you're start you're start losing followers. And then the end you'll start gaining followers again. If I don't promote myself in that middle, like I don't really get that extra jump. And so, so you have to like constantly keep just posting and putting yourself out there and finding new ideas, I guess. So why, why do you think it is that you lose in the middle, but gain in the end of the month? I think it's because of the certain content that I don't post or won't post like the like certain sexual things that I'm not comfortable doing, but a lot of men are into, I'm just, I won't do it. It's, it's I not just, for me. 
Well, because it's a because OnlyFans is a subscription service, right? You pay like yes. ten bucks a month, twenty bucks a month for a person's profile. Yes. So I would imagine the worst time to sub to subscribe to anything is the end of the month. So the way that like so if, like if you were to go on my pro- to subscribe and go on my profile right now. Um, even if it's the end of the month, you get to see everything I've ever posted until the following 25th of next month. If you subscribe to the 25th. Oh, okay. So it's not a hard lot to billing. No, it's per each person. So like each, like every month, my my money, like it. So one of the things we talked about on the phone, uh, that famous chick that made an OnlyFans. Oh God, good God, yeah, Bella Thorne. Okay, so for people watching or listening that didn't hear about this, so there is a Disney actress as a child turned Instagram influencer <laughs> named Bella Thorne, and she got a great following. Uh, she was actually in that movie, The Babysitter, on Netflix that I thought was hilarious. Have you seen that? Have you yeah. seen that movie about the kid? So people haven't seen that. It's about a kid who has a babysitter he has a crush on. She's like 17, 18. He's like 13, 14. And he, he goes to bed one night and the babysitter thinks that she drugged him to go to sleep. But in reality, she didn't. He wakes up and looks downstairs and her and her like five friends are about to sacrifice somebody in some ritual. <laughs> and yeah, oh, I love that movie. And, and it turns into a <laughs> Up case of home alone and it's yeah that's a great movie well anyway she uh so this woman bella thorne got a huge follow on instagram and then suddenly announced hey i'm creating an only fans and in two weeks she made two million dollars <laughs> Fuck you, two million dollars. <laughs> like, what? She's already fucking famous. Why does she need two million fucking dollars? And I remember there was a there's a huge controversy from like the OnlyFans community that was like, "Hey, you're stealing our subscribers." <laughs> oh my god! So <laughs> since that happened, OnlyFans had to put a restriction on how the money is put into like your, uh, I can't fucking remember what it's called. You have like a set amount, like that your money's going into that you can take out and put in your bank. And then you have another amount. That's what will eventually go into there. So it's like a middleman bank. It takes eight days per like one thing. So like if someone subscribes, I don't get that money for eight days and I I can't take it out for eight days. (laughs) because of that fucking bitch so like i took out i got my i get it every beginning of every month on the first so i got over a thousand dollars but then i have almost 500 more dollars that's sitting in the middle that i can't have right now i just have to wait until it slowly trickles into the top and it's super fucking annoying like interesting if I'm doing this, if they're paying me to see this and OnlyFans gets a chunk of that money, why can't I have the money right away? Yeah. But I mean, that's why. I would love to see, like, I would lo- love to see, like, the, 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 the behind the scenes financial. Cause, like, you would imagine if she's getting $2 million, Dude. somehow OnlyFans, the company lost money. I don't know how they would have lost money. But I would imagine well, because the way I say, the reason I say that is they had to have lose money if they would have, if they're changing their money policy. Mm-hmm. Companies will only change their money policy if they're losing it. Well, and if you also think about it, so per, so my subscription is $20 a month, $20 flat. OnlyFans gets $4 of that. So I only get $16 per subscription. And then it goes into my bank and it usually takes like three days to process. So I would think that they would have made a shit ton of money. Right. But if her subscription, I don't know how much her subscription was. If it was super cheap, they're only getting like a dollar 50 cents per subscription. So maybe that just didn't add up and they were pissed off. But I also think that she just abused the fact that she's fucking famous. And this is supposed to be like a small business kind of yeah i saw a, fun, a post that was like uh porn hub is like big comp big corporation and only fans is the local business shop i local. shared that yeah I fucking shared yeah that. shop local this holiday season like oh my god it's not 
It's not wrong. Like it's not necessarily wrong. And I just, that blew my mind. And I showed it to all my buddies. It was like, dude, she made 2 million off of doing what? Doing what? Have- she didn't post anything. Did she? I heard she didn't post nudes specifically, but she okay. posted pictures. <laughs> I'd be so fucking pissed. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, that was insane to me. Um, huh? I don't know. I just I can't believe. I still can't believe she made two million. But that's she the world we live in. Just said, "Damn, I got a mass following. Everyone's doing it. I'm gonna do it." And now all of us are over here like, "Why did you do that? You're such a bitch." Stop. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, well, this conversation went in directions I did not expect it to, but I'm very glad it did. No, I'm very, I'm seriously, seriously, I'm glad that it did because I like another thing that I hope to bring out of this platform is pulling sides out of people that they didn't expect would come out, mm-hmm. right? And just getting perspectives on people. Like why people see things the way they see things, why people do the way they or do things. Like, why do they do the certain things that they do in their life? Right. Yeah. So I'm glad this conversation happened. I'm very, I'm very <laughs> no, this glad. This has been super cool, dude. This yeah. is the first time I've ever done something like this. Yeah. So I'm very glad that this happened. Uh, we're inching up on two hours. Went by fast, right? Yes. Right. Went by real fast. You were um, totally right. I'm over here like, what am I going to talk about? What am I going to talk about? And I'm over here like, yep, 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 yep. It's great, right? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've found that it's a lot of fun. And I'm just, again, I, I've just been blessed to be able to know a lot of people. And so again, this has been a really beautiful thing about social media. It's just mm-hmm. figuring out where I can take this next. I was going to um, say, you and I would have never met. Yeah, exactly. That's super and, cool. Yeah, exactly. And then um, I don't know if you heard but today the actress uh ellen page came out as transgender ellen page she was um juno and and yeah so yeah she's a transgender like she used to be a boy well i think she's still biologically female but she wants to be a boy yeah she's identifying as a she's identifying as a male and she wrote this whole thing i'll send it to you after we cut recording yeah uh she wrote out this whole thing and um it was basically like yeah i'm glad to be able to speak out i'm glad like i'm very happy to do this and not to diminish it but that's basically what she said in about a four paragraph little memo (laughs) she wrote no it was like a very like formal memo and she put it on her social media and so now she like right out the gate she was like my name is elliot and i Go by the pronouns he, him. Wow. And then it's just this whole thing. So I read that today when I was on my break at work and I was like, okay, well, sure. (laughs) Like, yeah, like do your thing. I I mean, you don't affect me. So whatever, man. But I thought about it and I was like, I'm not in that community. I'm not Mm -hmm. in the LGBT, uh, lesbian gay, bi, trans, queer, plus, whatever. Like, what, <laughs> All like those. Who, yeah, who else falls under that umbrella? Like, I'm a straight guy. Yeah. Like, I'm just, I'm here. You're like. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a straight, I'm a straight guy. Like, that's what I am. And so I was just thinking about it. And there's just a lot of conversation, especially under the Trump administration. There's a lot of conversation about these rights are coming under attack. And these people are being discriminated against. And again, just from an outside looking in, I just look at it and I'm like, well, gay marriage is still legal. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard of any laws of you guys getting persecuted against. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sucks that that one bakery shop owner denied a gay couple their their. I was thinking the same thing. I remember. Yeah, yeah, I remember that happening. But I see both arguments. It's like, hey, stop being a dick. Bake the cake. But then on the other hand, it's like you're a private business. You can deny service to anyone you want for any reason. True. So. You know, but then I, so I thought about it and I was like, it would be interesting to sit down with transgender and like Mm -hmm. figure out how to do that. And I text a buddy of mine. I'm like, Hey, do you know anybody that is a transgender or a part of that community? He goes, yeah, I know three people like that. I was like, all right, well, 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 there you go. Okay, great. That's another week. So 
I just, I, 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 I'm very blessed that I've been able to use this platform to talk to a lot of different people. I'm glad that we have Zoom. I'm glad that yes. we have good internet connections. <laughs> and um, I'm just glad that we did this. So thank you a lot. Dude, thank you very you're much. You're so welcome. Thank you for the invite. I know we didn't get to do it in person, but I'm still happy that we got to do it yeah. anyhow. I know I was super fucking nervous, but it ended up being fine. <laughs> and no, this yeah, super cool. Yeah, thank you. Um, we'll talk a little bit afterwards. Um, when I cut everything, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, thank you a lot. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. See you guys. Yes. Goodbye. <laughs>